Hey, it's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about Radical. So if you've been looking for a way to sync up your calendar or your contacts with people in your family or a team or a group and really you don't have your own mail server running then something like Radical is really great because it takes advantage of CalDAV and CardDAV to do that for you and it actually makes it really simple to get it set up and running. So there is the ability to have some authentication around Radical, and I'm going to show you a Docker image today that actually has that kind of pre-set up. There's a little bit of setup that goes into it, but it is extremely minimal and it is really, really straightforward. So we're going to get in the install of Radical right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So I've been asked about Radical a few times in the past, and I've just never tackled it, but I did get to the point in my family life where we actually had so many things going on or have so many things going on now that it just makes sense to have a calendar that I can add things to and that can be shared with my wife and with the kids and with my mother and with my mother-in-law and so that people kind of know when something's happening and where it's happening and when we need to be there and it gives us alerts on our phones when we set those up to, to also sync up with this as well. So the nice thing about CalDAV is that iOS, Android, any, any basically calendar app that you have is probably going to work with CalDAV. That's kind of the standard for, you know, an open source way of, of doing calendar events and having any kind of notifications and stuff. I don't use the contact side of it, but CardDAV is very much the same thing. So it does have that capability as well. So you'll see that when we first set it up. So to get this set up, this is the one that I've come across and it bakes in the use of bcrypt and the authentication part that, that's really important. I used a different one early on and it didn't have that stuff built into it and I tried to get it set up and running and I kept hitting issues and hitting issues. So I went out and looked for another uh, Docker image that I could use and I came across this one and I've tried it and it seems to be working well. So to get your bcrypt password is important and being able to do that is, is really important as well. Now there's a lot of websites out there. This is the one that just came up first and I really like this site. I'll blow this up a little bit for the people on the on the smartphones, but um, you just type in your password. You, you do want this to be 10 rounds basically of, of encryption and then you hit bcrypt and it's going to give you this long string like this right here. So if we type in uh, my super secret password one, something like that. You hit bcrypt, it's going to do that and you see this change and now we've got this nice long bcrypt password and we can just copy that right here with this button to our clipboard and use that in, in our Radical setup. So I'm going to copy that to clipboard. I'll probably have to copy it again in a minute because I'm sure I'm going to blow things away. But um, this, this Docker uh, image is really not too hard to use, but there's a little bit of setup that has to be done. So we're going to jump over to the terminal here on my server. So you want to have a server set up. You need Docker installed. You'll want to have Docker Compose installed because we're going to use Docker Compose for this. Now I have a script out there that can install Docker, Docker Compose, Nginx Proxy Manager, Portainer, kind of everything for you um, and get, get your server set up as long as your server is kind of ready to go, um, you know, as far as being well updated and, you know, an up to date server. Now this is for a Linux based server. I don't do anything for Windows based servers. I'm sorry, but Windows does have Docker support. So if you want to run this on Windows, you should be able to do that as well. And I'm already logged into my server. And the thing that I like to do is I like to make my folder structure first. And the way that we want to have this structured today is we want to have a Docker folder. And then inside of that, we want to have the Radical folder. And then inside of that, we need to have a data folder. This is important for us because we inside the data folder, we need to have a user's file. So this is kind of how the structure is going to be. So just kind of knowing what structure you're going to need to start off makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to use this command mkdir dash p and the dash p means create this folder structure but if if the folder if the you know if the initial folders already exist don't recreate them just use what's there if they don't exist then go ahead and create them so when i put in docker slash radical slash data 
this make directory command is going to go, okay, is Docker here? And, and since I have it already, it's going to say, okay, it's there. I don't need to make that one. Then it's going to say, okay, is Radical there? And it's not. So it's going to create this one and it's going to create the data folder inside of it for me. If Docker wasn't there, it would create all three for me. So it really makes it very simple for you to create these folder structures uh, pretty quickly with this make directory and then hyphen P. So I'm going to hit enter. Now I should be able to go CD Docker, rad Docker slash Radical, and then data. And you can see, there we go, we're already inside of it. So now that we're inside this folder, we're just going to create a file called users. So we're going to use our nano text editor and we're going to create a file simply called users with no extension. And inside this file, you can put as many usernames and passwords as you want to have access to your system. So if you have five people in your family or your group or your team, whatever you're sharing your calendar with, you can give each of them a username and a password. So you could have Bill and then colon, and then his password would be, you know, password hashtag one, two, one. And then you could have, you know, Jane and her password could be, you know, um, Jane is awesome at everything. Um, now, I'm typing in the actual password. What we actually want instead of their password is to be, is the bcrypt version of their password. So if we just leave Bill and we leave that colon, we're gonna go and get that bcrypt version of that password that I showed you that website for a while ago. So if I change this to password hashtag 121 and I hit bcrypt. Now I need to remember what this is because this is what you're gonna type in at the, at the login prompt and then bcrypt is gonna check that hash against what you actually put in. So I'm gonna hit copy, I'm gonna copy the clipboard there and then we're gonna go back to our terminal and we're just gonna paste that in with control shift V like Victor. So there's the hashed password for Bill. Then we'll do, let's, let's just do one um, Belinda and we'll give her another password here um, that we can easily figure out and remember. Um, so we'll give Belinda, uh, Belinda is awesome as her password. It's a terrible password. She should never use that password, but we're gonna bcrypt it. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna go back over to our terminal and control shift and V like Victor. And there's Belinda's password. Now we can save this with control O like Oscar. Make sure it's got the users for the name, hit enter, and then we'll exit nano with control X. So we've got our users file, that's good. We're gonna move back one folder level into the Radical folder. So we're gonna do CD space dot dot. That moves us back one level. And then we're gonna create our file called docker compose.yaml. So this is the file that basically tells Docker, I want you to pull down this image, I want you to do some other things, you know, and I'm just gonna go grab my file information here and I'll have all this stuff in my show notes so you can go grab this stuff and pretty easily use it. I'll even have the link for the bcrypt site there. All right, so in this file, we've got it as version 3.7 and then we've got the services listed. App is what the uh, container is gonna be called. It's gonna be actually called radical underscore app underscore one whenever you run Docker Compose. This is the image that it's gonna pull. This is the container name that we wanna give it outside of Docker Compose. It's gonna restart unless stopped, so that's good. So basically if we reboot our server and we haven't stopped this container ahead of time, it's gonna just restart on its own. We don't have to go start it or anything. Then of course we've got this dot slash data folder that we're mat uh, mapping to the data folder inside the container. And then we've got basically this uh, port mapping. So this 5232 is the standard port where CalDAV runs. So if you can afford to leave this the same on the left side, that's good. But if you need to change it, you can. Just don't change the right side. You definitely want the right side to stay 5232, but the left side, you can change this port to any port that's open on your host machine. So once you've got this and you're set, we're gonna do Control O again to save and then enter to confirm. Control X to exit nano. And now we're gonna do docker hyphen compose up dash D. And then we're gonna do ampersand ampersand and docker hyphen compose logs dash F. These are two different commands that are just being put together with these ampersands. So this one says, bring up my Docker file and run it as a daemon in the background. After you do that and it's up and running, show me the logs, show me the logs that are happening. So I like to do it this way because I can see the logs after it's up and running, but when I quit out of the logs, the container continues to run. If everything's okay, that's what I want. So we're gonna hit enter. It's gonna go out and start pulling down that image. It doesn't take long, it's not a very big image, so that's nice. 
it says it's done, bring it up, and now it's going to show us the logs, basically. And really, this is probably all you're going to get, which is the Radical server is basically starting. So what we do now is we jump over to our browser. And maybe. There we go. We can open up a new tab, and we can say 192. This is the IP address of the host machine that I just installed that on. And then I'm going to put a colon, 5232. And if all went well, we should have a login screen. Now, remember, we had Bill and we had Belinda as users. So if I put in my name and I put any password, it doesn't matter. It should say you're not ready to log in. And there we go. Error 404, 401 unauthorized, which means I'm, I'm not authorized as a user. That's what we want. Now, if I put in Bill and I put in that password that we created and I put it correctly, there we go. We get logged in as Bill, which is great. And Bill basically has the ability to create a new address book or calendar or update an address book or calendar. So if we click on this link, we'll kind of see what we're, what we're dealing with. So we can call this Bill's, let's see, Bill's team. I don't know if there's any restrictions on characters that we can use there. And Bill's team calendar. And then down here, the type is going to be yeah, a calendar, journal, and tasks, calendar, and journal calendar and tasks, journal and tasks, calendar. So you can kind of see that I just leave it on the default. I didn't really change anything. And then you can give it a color. If you really, if you want a different color, go for it. So we can hit that. And now we can basically say create. And there we go. We've got Bill's team. It's got a calendar, journal and tasks. And it gives you this URL that now you can go and basically put into any CalDAV based calendar. Now this is running on our local IP address. So we have to remember that this is our local IP address, and this is basically going to try to get to it through our local IP address. So this would have to be running on our local network. Anything that we're going to sync has to be at some point on the local network, and then if we add new things, it has to, you know, that device has to come back to the local network to get synced up. It's not going to be a sync up over the internet. So if you want something that syncs over the internet, we need to take another step. We need to set up a proxy, or actually a reverse proxy, so that we can get in from the outside. Now, setting up the reverse proxy is outside the scope of this video, but I do have in that same script that'll install Docker and Docker Compose, I have a thing that'll install Nginx Proxy Manager. So this is just Nginx working as a reverse proxy, but it's got a nice UI that makes it fairly easy to set up proxies. So you install Nginx Proxy Manager, you go through changing the email, the default email and, and password the first time you log in. And then whenever you come to it, you'll log in with your normal credentials. And when you get in here, you'll have different proxy hosts that can proxy traffic from the outside world through your firewall to Nginx Proxy Manager, and it can direct traffic around your network to whatever services you're running that you want to expose to the outside world in a much safer way than just port forwarding everything all the time. That's, that's kind of bad. So we go into our proxy host. We click on Add a New Proxy. I'm going to zoom this up a little bit more, and I'm going to call this um, mycal.org. And I own the domain, routemehome.org. I'm going to hit tab so it creates a chip. So I own this domain, routemehome.org, and I created an A record in my, in my domain name registrar's system. And that A record has an asterisk. And then I pointed it to my home's public IP address. Now, if you have a dynamic IP address, you'll have to set up some things to handle dynamic addresses and things like that. Or you can use something like DuckDNS instead of your own domain. But in this case, I've got this set up so that it points to my public IP address. And whenever my public IP address gets a request on port 80 or port 443, my router knows to send that to my Nginx proxy manager. Nginx proxy manager says, what did you request? So if I, if I try to request junk, and I'll show you, if I say, you know, give me junk.routemehome.org. It's just going to go, congratulations, you reached in as an X proxy manager, but I don't actually have a URL that matches that, so you can't go anywhere. You're, you're done. That's really what it does every single time. But when I create one that actually exists, Nginx proxy manager sees it and says, oh, I know where to send that because I'm about to tell it where to send it. So I'm going to tell it, send it over to this IP address. That's the host that I installed it on. And forward point, port 5232. So if you get a request on 80, send it to 5232. I'm going to say block common exploits, give me WebSocket support, and we're going to hit save. So I'm going to go down here to right here, my cal, and I'm just going to hit, I'm going to click it. Make sure it comes up. It keeps the address. That's what we want. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in Bill and his password. 
like that and make sure that Bill can log in. So I'm logged in and you can see that Bill's got this calendar he created and now it's showing that it'll work on my domain. So this is what we want. This is a good start, but we don't want this to be HTTP. We want this to be HTTPS. We want it to be encrypted and secure. So we're going to close this. We're going to go back to our entry here in Nginx Proxy Manager. We're going to go over here to the right and I'll scroll up just a little bit. So it's right here, mycal.writemyhome.org. I'm going to go to the three dots. I'm going to click on them. I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to go to the SSL tab. I'm going to click on this little none. It's a drop down and I'm going to pick request a new SSL certificate, force SSL, HTTP2 support. I'm going to make sure my email's in here for Let's Encrypt and then I'm going to agree to the Let's Encrypt service and I'm going to hit save. Now, if everything goes well, this is just going to, this box will just disappear with no errors. Sometimes I get a little red thing up here and it doesn't work the first time just like that. If there's no error in here, I usually just click save again. There's some kind of quirk going on. It usually works the second time. Sometimes, I, Once I think I've had to do it more than, more than twice, but once I do this, it usually works the second time and the box goes away. And now we can see that under mycal.routemehome.org, I've got Let's Encrypt. So if I click on this, it should take me to an HTTPS protected website, which it does. Again, I can log in as Bill. Let's see if I type in the right password. There we go. Should log right in. And now I've got Bill with HTTPS capability, and this is the URL that I want to use to add to my CalDAV calendar. Now, Bill has a team calendar for Bill's team, but maybe Bill wants to create another calendar, and he wants to call this one HR, and it's the HR calendar of events. And again, we can just leave it whatever it is. We can change the color. We can click on uh, yeah, select, and then we just click on create. And now Bill has two different calendars that he can use off of Radical, and he can go set up his CalDAV for that. And let's grab this first calendar, this Bill's calendar. Let's copy that, and then let's go back to our calendar here, and let's just paste this in for our URL. Let's hit OK. Now it's going to prompt us for our user. So in this case, you'll want to create a shared user if you're going to create a shared calendar. Bill wouldn't want to share his own credentials, but he would want to create a shared user for Radical and then share that out. But in this case, we'll just practice with Bill. And you can say add the password to the key ring or not. It's really up to you whether you do that. Um, it's not required. So now you can see I've got this unnamed calendar over here on the left. This is the Bill calendar. It didn't, uh, I didn't pull in the name and I should have. So Bill's team right there. So now we can hit OK again. And now we've got Bill's team set up as that calendar. And you can see uh, that I can add events and then these events will sync back to the CalDAV server and then anything else connected to that CalDAV server on that URL with those credentials are going to sync up. So this is a really great tool that lets you just have calendar events and you can see I've got my calendar kind of filling up things that we just have every day that we need to remember to do, things that are constant, things that are happening, and I'm constantly adding more things to this calendar so it just gets more and more busy at times and it's really been useful. thought I'd cover this. It's a really great tool. I've really liked using it and, it and getting it set up this way was super easy. So I appreciate the person who created this Docker Compose uh, setup that allows me to get this and get the authentication set up with Bcrypt. Um, really, really makes it so great. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.